Hello, well, folks. I got a problem with this stove. I thought it was going to happen sooner or later, but it has happened. Um, it had warped, and now the seal has come apart inside here. So I am going to take this apart. It is starting to separate at the seam, and it will, will not hold a fire all night. Easily enough to fix. It's just a matter of taking it apart and doing so. So that's what I gotta do. First of all, the blower motor comes off. There we go. This is the one I installed myself. It's just a just an add-on one that I ended up getting. Oh of course that's a different size. Do I have that? Now this is the million dollar question. I do so. <laughs> well, that comes out. Oh, that comes off. So I basically undo this all the way around the stove. door just come off. Um, I'm going to set them right in this bowl so I don't lose them. I'm going to start from the bottom work my way up. I don't want to lose them. But I'll show you exactly what goes on with these guys. And they're not too hard to fix either. One right here in the center, of course. That should be it. There it is. Take this. Set this down. So I pretty much just take this. I'll walk it up and turn it around and set it up on the stove. And don't knock your lights out either. <laughs> now, this is what's happened right here. This little seam, it is starting to separate here. I will get that camera and I'll show you exactly where it's happening. I'm going to take this all the way off here the best I can. Let me show you what's happened there, folks. So in there, that is right inside the stove there. You see that? That's how large of a gap there is there. That is inside the stove. So if I stuck a light in there, you would actually see right out. So what I have to do is take this little piece of tin off here. And it's just a folded over piece of tin that holds that together. But we're definitely going to try to fix that. But first I have to hammer that all in. And then we're going to reseal that.
don't know why they don't actually bolt these together like this when they ship them out. I guess it just costs too much money. I don't know. Should by rights drill some holes in it first, but these are self-tapping threads. Those are self-tapping screws, so that's all I'm going to do. As long as I can get them in there right. Get enough of these in here, they won't they won't spread open again. That pulls are tight. I've never found that little piece of tin just pushed over there stays. Never seems to on these. I've had these a long time. And that will pull her in tight. And we'll leak again. Now if the front starts to do the same thing, this is what I do. I pop that little tin piece off and I just use screws and hold the rest on. I don't mess around with that thing. Hey, you probably thought I was going to say Jim, right? You don't mess around with Jim. <laughs> Jim Crochet. This looks not bad. I don't see any holes in it. It's just starting to separate. Ooh, I got a hot spark on the finger. I felt that one. Now, if I don't take this off, no time at all, it's going to leak from here. I know it. This here. I'll take that right off. It's not at all necessary on there anymore. The bottom wasn't even together. Actually, that is all one piece. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's stuck under there. But it's... Will it come off? I think it will. Just have to get this in the right spot and give it a hit. And it'll come off. Certainly not going to put another piece like that back on it because they just don't last. Now this stove is old too, folks. It's not a new stove. This stove is probably 25 years old, 30 years old. It's not new. And they're not made out of thick material, but that's why you get such quick heat out of them because they are thin. And if it gets bad, if it gets any worse, I will just build a good steel box around it. I'll build another firebox for it, and I'll just put tin work back around it, and then it'll give me a really good stove. I build something, build a box out of thicker material. This will really help it a lot. Now I will probably do the front while I'm at it. There. 
I want to make sure there's no holes in it. I don't see any air holes. No, I don't see any spots where it could leak through. I think that fixed it first. Now I'll put the back back in place. And now I'll go around and I'll check the front as well. Now, I'm probably not going to use the old original screws. I think I'll use some new ones. First, I want to check this. This all seems to be not too, too bad. I mean, it's not, it's not super great, but it'll work. Holder good and tight again. Don't want to get my fingers in there and that starts going in there, I'll tell you that much. No! I want them in there. Get all nice new screws back in it. Get just there and I'll lift up the other side as well. You can tell they're going to go right into place as soon as you start this. You'll know where they sit. Well, so you folks probably wouldn't do this anyway. I imagine a lot of you folks would probably just go buy new. But I am not in that position. There's really not much wrong with the old stove. Nothing that a few screws won't fix. A little bit of relining up won't, won't cure. what's happening. So, this outside part has to go up. This has to go down. There. That fixed it crazy. No. Don't want to make new holes. Don't want to use the old ones. I had to move that chain piece out of the way. That's all. Right. Yeah. One more down here. Now, since I seen that elbow came apart, I seen that elbow come apart. I don't trust that. It came apart way too easy. Underneath the back here. This has to go over like this now. Something under the back, maybe? No, yeah, something under the back for sure. What can I do? What can I use? You know what? Probably a piece of this stuff here. So I'll break this in half. Use one for this side and one for the other side, and that should be good. 
They are light soles. put a screw in back here okay so what i did is i ended up putting i drilled and put a screw in here and on the other side now if you're running these style pipes i'm telling you i would check them because these crimps they come loose all the time and those can pop out especially if it's on an elbow like this okay so that that is all fixed there now i just have to put on the uh put on that little uh blower motor i think we're good for the back now i can actually light a fire in this and uh, go ahead and use this again and it'll be it'll be safe again it's not going to take off on us in the middle of the night although that did keep the chimney clean let me tell you there was no uh no creosote in that chimney <laughs> okay well i'm going to see what i can do for lighting a little fire in here folks and i'll show you just how fast this jack pine lights with me. I'm going to open up the bottom door here a little bit. That's probably lots of paper in there for this pine. I'm going to need you way here for this folks. I am very sorry. I'm just going to put some of this. We just, I just, just got this wood today. Out of the out of our wood lot it's just cut fresh today and brought in no time to let her dry because it should be already somewhat dry it is winter time it's not that wet out there but it's just like kindling this stuff it'll go up really fast and it gives really quick heat it doesn't last super long in the stove but let me tell you if you're if you're looking to get warm in a hurry this jack pine will do it quickly. No time at all. This house will be so bloody warm. With just this in it. Poor Heather may get cooked out upstairs. Okay, I'm gonna need a little strip of this now. I'm gonna give this a little light. See what it's like. Get that paper catch. I'll turn this up all the way. Close this. should burn in no time at all I hope they're starting to go already it's gonna close this up and let that do its thing it's starting it's starting to burn already Starting to burn good. Leave that door open a little bit. I'll split some more wood and I'll toss it in there. Split it right here. You can hear it starting to. You hear that going already? Stuff. 
Okay. We'll open it up, see how it's doing. It's really crackling. Now this is a soft wood, of course. That's why it burns so easy. And it's light to this wood. Get the other piece put in there as well. If I had a temperature gun, I would show you folks, but this is getting it's getting pretty hot already. that not much of a draw to that pipe is there probably because my ash pan is getting a little full it finds it easier to draw the air it's easier to push this smoke right now at the door than it is up the chimney until the chimney gets hot what I should have done is lit normally what I do if I want to light a fire fast is I will light a piece of paper and I'll put it in the chimney and burn it just to get the chimney hot so it draws it up there but as soon as that chimney gets hot yeah that chimney's hot already that's how that's looking i hope that's showing up so i'll close this it'll take right off now i'm going to open the lid here While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to put the blower back on the back, folks. All right, I'm back. Wood Stove Repair 101. Now, this thing here, I just kind of lined this up the best I could here. So it's not perfect. Not in the least. Right there. Hey, that chimney is getting hot already. That separation is off the heat. And our little wood lot back there is just full of that stuff. Okay, we're going to plug this in and we're going to see if this works. There it goes. Before I couldn't have that blower on because it kept blowing smoke out there. Well, that's what the temperature is at right now in here, folks. But I give that a few minutes. We are sitting at 25 after 7, roughly. Yeah, 26 minutes after 7. We're going to check this in a few minutes because we are sitting at, what are you at? 69 degrees, maybe? Should we say 20 Fahrenheit? How does that sound? 20 Celsius, sorry. 20 Celsius. We're gonna check that in a few minutes. Okay, well that has been going for about 10 minutes or so now. That's how it's burning. Good and hot. Not much creosote in there at all. That's cleaning her right out. Usually what we do every morning is we let that crank. I know we're missing some fire bricks in there, but it was missing when I got it. So I'm gonna close this up. Close her down. Close the front door. Close that pipe. And we're gonna go check the temperature upside upstairs. It's been 10 minutes now, roughly. So let's go check that out because my supper is ready. And this guy's hungry. What do we got here? That's what I'm having for supper. What is that, Heather? That's mashed potatoes. Yeah, and uh, turkey. 
Turkey gravy. And then, um, Garlic toast. Yeah. So that's what the time is now. Probably hasn't went up much yet, but it's went up a little bit. There we go. Remember, it has to warm up the basement as well. And what's the temperature doing outside? I mean, what's it look like outside? More bloody snow. Lots of snow. Warms up quick though, but it's only zero degrees. Going to put the birds away, Heather? Yeah. Okay, thanks, babe. We are going to, well, I'm going to wait for Heather to come in. And then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to start to eat. That's what I plan on doing. Right, Wojo? I'm going to get something to eat. <laughs> Coming in? Not going with Heather? Guess not. That uh, door alarm goes off every time something moves in front of it, which is nice. So anyways, that's probably it for today, folks. You all take care, and uh, we will talk to you another time. So that's what we are. We've been up that much in that length of time. And that's had to heat up the basement as well. Not too shabby. Talk to you tomorrow, folks.